tell you one thing, if a little green man pops out of me, I'm shooting first and asking questions later. You are on the verge of destroying the entire universe. Welcome to the Strange Podcast with Sam and Logan. If you enjoy the show, please go to iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or wherever you're listening. And please give us a good rating. If you want to share a story or have ideas for a future episode, you're welcome to visit us at www.thestrangepodcast.com. We look forward to hearing from you. Hello, people in podcast land. This is episode 15. I'm Logan Marks. And I'm Sam Baxter. Today is January 21st, 2018. And today we're going to be talking about immortal people and Victor... Gobbin, uh, I hate these Russian names. They're just really, <laughs> really weird. Russian. Yeah, there's two, two Russian for me. <laughs> two ethnic. Graben Grabenikov, a Russian scientist that uh, claims to have built a levitation device. Yeah, levitation. Yeah, levitation. He can fly around. Did he work using the power? Did, huh? did he work when Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? Run <laughs> 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 that shit. <laughs> Nobody. He's using the power of bugs. Bugs, huh? Sounds interesting. Yeah. So, uh, you got uh, any news articles that, that you've uh, come across? Well, I saw a couple of them. They were kind of kind of weird. Um, a couple boys, like young boys, 12, 13 year olds, they the police arrested them because they vandalized and killed 5,000 bees from from this co- um, company that that did a lot of honey and used a lot of bees. Mm-hmm. That sounded dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they used a lot of bees. Um, no, they uh, <laughs> they caused sixty thousand dollars worth of, of damage um, just by destroying like a lot of the bees, killing them, and then destroying a lot of their uh, their tools and their property. Uh, so they messed up their business. They messed up their business, man. <laughs> <laughs> Dad joke of the day. Yeah, and, and, but but the shitty thing is because we all know how great insurance is. Insurance never fucks anybody over, but. Unfortunately, the first time ever, insurance doesn't cover beehives. So this this wipe this this right here wiped out the the com- the people's uh, the livelihood. I mean, sixty grand. Really? You know. well, that's yeah, and it's really shitty because right. Um, I mean, they've had that that thing where the bees are dying off, and that's not helping. No, no, no. And I mean, yeah, I mean, bees are pretty important to the to the ecosystem, and we need them. And these kids just wiped out like a bunch of them, and uh, unfortunately, um, they, you know, thankfully the cops caught them and. I, I mean, mm. like I said, they're going to be tried. There's nothing you can do about the bees. That's the bad part. Um, mm. But but uh, the good thing is, is a couple they they got a uh, they collected thirty thousand dollars on uh, a crowdfunding fundraiser. So hopefully they can start their business back up in the spring. But it's just pretty it's just pretty shitty. Yeah. So were they were these? So how did they destroy them though? They, were they, did they wear like bee suits and go in there and like start kicking over the all oh, the, the beehives, bees boxes and stuff? Yeah, the hives. You know, it didn't it didn't really say how they um, well. Because you think if they went there to destroy it, like they would start getting stung and stuff. No, well, actually, actually, what they did was they opened up like they were they were keeping them like warm and like little um, like their homes. And what they did was uh-huh. they opened up the doors and and tore down like all their um, all the insulation. And so they basically oh, fe- they froze to death. Oh, they froze them. Yeah, because you know it was winter time. It's it's in uh, yeah. So this so this happened in Iowa, and uh, you know it, get, it gets cold there, and they were keeping them warm to you know to keep them alive. Uh-huh. And the, the kids just, you know, tore down, you know, whatever whatever shielding and protection they had. And the bees, bees just froze to death. They, they even, like, uh-huh. you know, they broke into the shed. They took all their equipment out and threw it into the snow, smashed with everything they could. What a bunch of dumbasses. You know, I know boys will be boys, but um, that's just, you know, it's unfortunate. And it's because a lot of money was involved. That's too bad. And and it's, and it's people's livelihood, so that's not cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, speaking of stupid kids. Yeah. Do you hear about this, uh, the things that, that they're doing on YouTube with that uh, Tide Pod Challenge? Yeah, <laughs> I have. <laughs> I have. So why don't you tell everybody what it's about? Tide has a product. It's, they're called Tide Pods. As you put it in, it's detergent. And basically people are trying to eat them. Mm, they sound tasty. Yeah, they will. <laughs> <laughs> they probably well, you know, I've heard of people that eat eat soap, like they have that. Like I don't don't remember if you ever seen that uh that uh documentary or that show that uh, my favorite addiction. No, I never saw that. You know, well, there's like people that actually go and they they take like laundry detergent and they they eat it throughout the day. They eat it and they, like a snack. Yeah, they can't get. Yeah, they they'll like um um a friend of mine. Uh, she told me that she actually does this. She eats soap on her own volition. Yeah, so she takes like the do- the the laundry soap, puts it in a, in a little bag, and throughout the day she'll like uh she'll put her finger in it and then eat it. Holy shit! I don't know if I I don't know if this is cool. She's done it since she was a kid, but I mean a lot of a lot of people say that it's because of 
people who've gone through like traumatic incidences when they were young or like you know had a had were abused as children and they they find something that makes them feel comfortable hmm. or makes them feel clean <coughs> clean huh yeah so they Fuck. so like they you know they, they start eating the deto- deto- the detergent so that me- and... does that mean if they need to feel clean they'll they'll eat douche too <laughs> <laughs> i'm just saying isn't that shit supposed to clean <laughs> Oh no! I, I can't even imagine. <laughs> I'll just eat fuck. You want to be clean? Fuck you, get clean. <laughs> I heard that's a, I heard that's a cleaner too. So <laughs> I'm not well versed. I don't even so. think you're supposed to do that anymore. What's that? I don't think people do douches anymore. Fuck! I don't know, man. <laughs> that's above my pay grade. <laughs> I don't know that. They don't know nothing about that. <laughs> so so people so, are eating like the, these soaps, huh? Just for fun, or just out of out of habit, huh? As a as a well, I think a lot of it. I think it's well. The uh, it started out where um, the Onion posted in like two, 2015. The Onion posted a satire piece about about a perspective of a toddler who was who was eating them. You know, it's like because they look like candy. Sure. And at some point, you know, uh, older kids started doing it, and like college, it got to the point where even College Humor published like a video titled like. Don't eat laundry pods. Seriously, they're gonna they're poison. Yeah, and and so it got to the point, you know, where it became like a meme, okay. and then so people started, you know, doing the the Tide Pod challenge where they go and they would eat it, and you have a couple YouTubers and they're like putting it in their mouth trying to eat it and just fucking throwing it up. And last year, the U.S. Poison Control Center received reports of more than ten thousand five hundred children younger than five who were exposed to the capsules. Mm-hmm. The same year, nearly 220 teens were reportedly exposed, and about 25% of those cases were intentional, according to the data from the um, American Association of Poison Control Center. So they're actually, they're, I know they're getting sick, but has anybody died? I think there's been like six cases of deaths, but eating it can fuck up your digestive system pretty bad. Damn. And the challenge is to what? Make sure you don't throw up? What? Like, what, <laughs> the, what do you win I don't if, if you do it? In your mouth or, uh, I don't know. They, they just try to eat it, but they try to keep it in their mouth, I guess, and it just like, you know, it starts dissolving. Yeah, and see, how, I guess, how long they keep it in their mouth. Oh, it's pretty fuck fucking gross, man. I guess if like the pot was like five million dollars, I might try it, right? But <laughs> <laughs> I ain't doing it just for to say I fucking beat you. I beat your record I know for a YouTube for a YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> you lasted twenty six seconds. I'm twenty seven. I win. Fuck that. <laughs> There's gotta be some big monies involved. Damn, that's a <laughs> shitty challenge. Yeah, I, you know, and um, I watch a lot of football and. One of the uh, the tight ends from uh, New England, um, Rob Gronkowski, he, he did a video today too. He was he did a video that I saw that was telling kids to not do it. So I guess this is, this is a really big thing, and YouTube's like pulling videos from it, aren't they? Yeah, I I hope so. I think they are. I think I heard that YouTube's they trying to be. trying to take down or clamp down as many uh, Tide Pod challenges as they can. But jeez, man, I I just don't see. Maybe I'm just too old. <laughs> no, it's the children who had to touch, not me. <laughs> I know what's right. I know what's cool these days. <laughs> They're the ones who are cool. wrong. <laughs> Damn, man. Tide Pod. Fuck. I don't know. I mean, I remember the ice bucket challenge. That that seemed kind of harmless. I mean, unless you, you know, you couldn't handle I, anything I really cold. Like, I, yeah, I really like that one because I just, I just love the watching the fails on it where people would. Like, there were some bad fails. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That girl, like, fucking dropping the bucket, like, do it on her friend, and just drops the whole bucket on her, bam. I know, just, like, like, knocks him out. Or, yeah. Like, they, like, they do, like, on chairs and stuff, and they all fall down all over people. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> or they just slip in, and, and they just <laughs> fall on their asses hard. <laughs> uh, those those were those were funnier. Those were better. Yeah. And they were harmless. <laughs> That's the thing, is they were harmless. These ones right here, I mean, if, if they're fucking up your digestive system, man, you don't want to fuck with that. I saw that on, um... Uh, we talked about Ash vs. Evil Dead. This isn't really big news, but I mean, the new season's coming out, and Ash's daughter's supposed to be involved in it. Oh. I know. I mean, I, the show's good. It's pretty good. And uh, his daughter's supposed to be in it. So I think I need to go back and watch uh, season two again because I, I, I watched them live or, you know, right when they aired. Mm-hmm. But um, I don't remember this, the daughter, why he would have had a daughter in, in it. Who's the, who's the mom? I, I don't know. I just saw a little blurb. Is this going to be just one of his random women that he has? She, he's had lots, man. <laughs> <laughs> Ash has had a lot well, of Well, you know, here on the show, we do analyze Ash. Yeah. <laughs> he's, Ash he's is our, pretty badass. He's pretty much our hero. He is. He's really bad. I mean, he had a pretty good job when he worked smart. Yeah, <laughs> smart. <laughs> yeah, he, Ash was pretty cool. And so uh, hopefully the new season coming out, 
Um, it's coming out February 25th. Going to pick up where Season 2 left off. So we're going to see what uh, the Necromonicon and the Deadites have for Ash. I mean, hopefully there'll be some more gore and, and blood. Man, that show's good at, at providing that. Yeah, and some smart-ass comedy, too. Yeah, I mean... Ash is just great all around. I, I'm not sure why they never made another movie. Do you ever hear anything about that? Well, they, well, they made that one remake. That was that I didn't really. Care nah, about. that's 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 not real. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's be let's be honest here. Okay, I'm sorry if anybody liked that one, and it's probably fantastic, but it didn't have Ash. Uh, not, not the real Ash. It wasn't horrible. It was just like another generic scary movie that they. That's what I'm they, saying. They but the, out, yeah. but it used the title, and that's that's how they got you know whatever people to watch it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, it's this guy's still alive. He's still doing stuff. So it's not. There's no reason why you can't ask him to, to pick up, right? Well, yeah. I mean, the, I mean, if the shows are starting to get popular, I mean, he's on season three. Eventually, I think they'll. I, I hope they'll put another movie out. There was a lot of followers on this show. I mean, a lot of people like it. They grew up. They saw it back in the day. I mean, it's 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 cool classic, the Evil Dead yeah. movies and Army of Darkness. Yeah, this I mean, everybody's at least seen one of those two movies. If yeah, not I think Army of Darkness is my favorite one. It was great. It was yeah. you know it was a, it was a little more you know uh, lighter. Yeah, you know, that's I think as, I like it because it, it was more there was a little more comedy in it. It wasn't it so was. like they weren't trying really hard. It was more. Yeah, it just wasn't gore. It was actually yeah. like comedy. Yeah, that, that 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 did pretty good. <laughs> Speaking of something like that as well, I, I don't know if did you ever get to see uh, Z Nation? This is the last season. Not yet, not yet. Oh man, so good. Like I gotta wait till it gets on Netflix, which will be another ten years. Yeah, <laughs> I know that's too bad. <laughs> the season was pretty good, man. I, I still like that show. I haven't gotten tired of it yet, so I'm thankful. I don't know if anybody else out there likes uh, Z Nation, but it's another good show. It's another, you know, it's light. It's not super dark or mysterious or creepy. It's just good. That's all I gotta say. And those kinds of awesome characters on it too. There are. Awesome there characters. are. Just. Yeah. Well, speaking of awesome characters, you know that uh, Buzz Aldrin turned uh, 88 yesterday? You mean Buzz Lightyear? Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> 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 no. Buzz Aldrin, huh? Yeah, he turned one 88. Of the moon, one of the Moonwalkers, huh? The Moonwalkers. Yeah, there was 12 <laughs> of them, and the, uh, there's only five left. Five left. Yeah, so there's Buzz Aldrin, there's Alan, Alan Bean, um, David Scott, Charles Duke, and Harrison Schmidt. And all of them are in their 80s. So, like, Dang. in a couple of years, there, there might be... That's kind of sad that there's not going to be anybody who's ever walked on the moon anymore. Well, you know, NASA will be happy because they won't have to do a cease and desist on what they saw up there. So. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> right? They won't, be able, they, they, can't, they won't be able to talk about the aliens. No, no. I mean, I mean, remember hearing on some shows, like, when they were on there, and people would, would ask them, like, hey, just, like, I remember one guy, like, like you know, cornered Buzz Aldrin mm-hmm. or, and asked him, like, hey, what did you see up there? He's like, I, you know, I told you what I saw. He's like, well, why don't you? Did you see any aliens up there? He's like, yeah, I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna talk about that. And the guy's like, look, just put your hand on the Bible and this Bible right here, because I know you're religious. Put your hand on the Bible and just say, no, there was no aliens. And the guy's like, I'm not doing it. Buzz wouldn't do it. Oh, really? He, he yeah, he refused to uh, put his hand on the Bible and and you know, you know, just just admit or mm-hmm. or or deny what, what he saw up there. He wouldn't. He wouldn't do it. I remember that one uh, Moonland conspiracy guy came up to him, and then uh, Bu- uh, uh, Buzz Aldrin went and punched him in the face. Yeah, he fucking punched him. <laughs> <laughs> and he's getting, he's getting all pissed off. <laughs> You're an army boy. <laughs> hey man, I don't know if that's an honor being punched by like a seventy-some-year-old man. Or, <laughs> or if you just feel like a big, if you just feel like a big pussy. I know he's oh a moonwalker God. too, so you should take it, take yeah, it as a compliment. <laughs> But I, well, you know, Buzz Aldrin, I'm, those guys are in good shape. Yeah, well, sh- you know, those, those guys are tip top shape still. I, you know, I've seen him; he still looks good. Yeah, you know, I mean, shit, he's yeah. eighty eight years old. I mean, that's a, he still gets around. Yeah, yeah, he's he's still in pretty good shape. You know, they they had to be in good shape, and I, I think he still is. I mean, unless he's a synthetic, <laughs> <laughs> he's an alien. <laughs> yeah, except for he's a robot. You know, <laughs> it's his clone. You know. <laughs> <laughs> he won't die. He's gonna be around forever. Speaking of around forever, man, got some uh, some some funny tales, some odd tales of immortality. Oh, that sounds pretty awesome. Like vampires? Well, you know, vampires are part of that folklore. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you know stuff like that. You know, Highlander. Remember Highlander the movie? There could be only one. There could be only one, but the prize was to lose immortality because, right, if you're immortal, everyone seems like that's you know they feel like that's a good idea. Like I don't want to get sick. I don't want to experience death. Mm-hmm. You know, any of that stuff. But when you think about it, if you really think about it, a lot of times is if you don't mind being a loner, that's what you're going to be because you're going to outlive everyone you love. Oh, dang. I don't, I don't know if I'd want to live forever. That sounds, that sounds, See, that's, 
horrible. <laughs> I know a few. I know a few people that do, man. Really? I know some. Me- I know some megalomaniacs who don't want to die. They want to be around forever. They're well, obviously they don't know what's afterlife. Yeah. Nobody does. Yeah, that's scary. Yeah. And yeah, right. And so they're they're they want to live forever. They want to accomplish things. They want to be billionaires. They want to be part of you know the Illuminati. Uh-huh. They want to run shit. You know. They just don't want to die. Yeah. <clears throat> the, you know, the fear of dying is is it's it's honestly you know a lot of people fear it. You know, it's scary. Mm. But um, so throughout life, you know, throughout the centuries, there's always been tales of how you could become immortal, right? We all know about the Fountain of Youth. You know, that's something that you can always, it's always some obscure place where it shows up and not very often. And, um, you know, if you can get your hands on that water, you know, you're supposed to be able to live forever, mm-hmm. right? We saw that in in uh, um, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Remember he had that chalice? Oh, yeah, the, what was it? The- Remember the Water of Life? Right, he he heals his dad who got fatally wounded. Remember that? Oh, was it the Holy Grail? It was like it was like some chalice. It was some, like some water that was supposed to. Remember, it was one of the knights, one of those knights that um, was protecting it. Mm-hmm. Anyway, there's it's usually something like that. But there's also some other ways besides water. Like uh, there's supposed to be some peaches of immortality. So in the Chinese mythology, the Queen Mother of the West, her name is Shi Wang Mu. So she lives like far high, high and far in the mountains in a hidden garden where she grows peaches that can give eternal life. So the peach tree is set to bloom once every few thousand years, and it takes about three thousand years for the fruit to to ripen. But the, of course, the garden's location is unknown. But if you can if you can find it and eat the fruit, you'll achieve immortality. Again, this is one of those you know it sounds like a fountain of life. Oh, it sounds like the opposite, like of the of the the apple in the Bible or. You eat it and you, you eat it and you start and you die. <laughs> yeah, but remember, they're not in China. They're not religious, so uh, yeah. You know, this this doesn't that that whole story to them with Adam and stuff doesn't pertain to anything. But just sinners. You know, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this one this one is if you can achieve the fruit, then you can get immortality. Mm-hmm. But again, is that the same thing as Adam? Right? They they got booted out of out of Garden of Eden. Yeah, you're both still gonna suffer either way. Mm. Because, like I said, the immortality, you're going to outlive everyone you love. Um, another another weird one is like in, uh, it's called a ningyo. Mm-hmm. It's like a mermaid-like creature. Mm-hmm. If you're able to catch it and eat it, it can uh, it can grant you immortality, but also misfortune. So they both come in hand in hand. Mm-hmm. You know, you without one, you don't get one without the other. Yeah. So, like, the story of that one was like a fisherman caught the fish. Him and his buddies caught it, and they prepared it. <clears throat> but as they were going to eat it, like, one of the men, they was like, oh, shit, this shit looks fucked up. Don't eat it. So they all got drunk, and he, he just put it in a bag, his piece of fish. They all th- the rest of the guys threw this away. He put his, like, in a bag and just put it off to the side. Mm-hmm. Well, the next day, his daughter comes in. And it's like, you know, Daddy, did you bring me a present? And he's all hungover. He's like, oh, yeah, in the bag, there's something for you. Like, you know, just leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> you always want something, stupid kid. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, um... She goes and she sees the fish and she eats it. And he, he like, kind of, like, later on, he's like, oh, shit, that fish, that fucked up fish. She ate it. So he went to go check on her. And she was okay. No big deal. Mm-hmm. So, um, all right. Got, got, got away unscathed. She didn't get sick. She didn't die. Cool. Well, she stops aging when she gets, like, into her prime of her life. And she gets married. She outlives her husband. Mm-hmm. Married. Outlives her next husband. Next few husbands, she just outlives them. And she basically, like... She becomes so sad and and depressed that she and lonely that she just becomes a monk. She's like, "Fuck this!" Like, mm-hmm. I've been married, I've had love, and they've all died. I've outlived them all. Yeah. So, <clears throat> the last of her stories it says she reaches eight hundred years. When and they say that's when she had died because the story ends. Her her stories end there. So, it can eating becoming immortal can also you know like I said you cannot live everything, mm-hmm. but again everything you love is going to be gone. So. Um, it's a, it's a double-edged sword. And so there's a couple people that are kind of lame that, uh, <laughs> that, that claim to be immortal in, mm-hmm. in, in like, uh, in recent times. Well, this one's a few hundred years ago, but this American politician, Leonard Jones was born in 1797 mm-hmm. and this guy claimed to be immortal, right? Uh-huh. He said, anyone could be immortal. You just need the correct amount of fasting and praying. Okay. Oh. So all you gotta do is is fast and pray. Oh, the correct amount. I don't think yeah. I could be immortal because I'd have to eat the, a lot. <laughs> well, hey, don't overdo it. He didn't tell you how much it is. Just just the right amount. Oh. 
so so he convinced the preacher to believe with him and and so the preacher bought into it and they they founded the live forever faith so they were they were trying to recruit people to have a city of immortals they wanted to <clears throat> just full on have an immortal city mm -hmm. just immortals just a pure blood so is this like a cold no i didn't it didn't cuz listen <laughs> as they were recruiting yeah. in the recruiting stages the preacher died. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> so uh, it'd be funny if they, like he just tried to keep him alive, like Wicked at Bernie's. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I know. <laughs> what do you think, preacher? He just all has his head yeah, on like, a string. Like, yeah, those, yeah, yeah. Like strings, he's all yeah, pulled on. I know. I know. <laughs> so, so, so the guy got embarrassed, right? Mm -hmm. So you know what he did? Uh. He switched to politics. <laughs> <laughs> Since he was good at lying. For, yeah, you know, because politi politicians don't lie. So he went to a place. That, <laughs> he went to a place where, you know, he wasn't going to be. There was no, be no lie. <laughs> he wouldn't believe him. So, you know what he did? He ran for president a few times with his main policy being around immortality. Oh. But um, he never won. And eventually he died at age 71. So. Oh, that's a pretty good long life, it? though. I mean, he. Yeah, he, he lived up to 71, you know, and um, unfortunately, his all his promises and stuff didn't <laughs> come to fruition. So, I guess, everybody out there, I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but I guess we cannot believe politicians all the way. Uh. And this other, this last one I'm going to talk about is uh, Alex Chu. So, this guy nowadays, he's in our real time, lifetime right now. So, he's still alive. Um, yeah, he's, he's living right now, man. Okay. He's a 46-year-old man who claims to be immortal. Oh. So the way he achieved it is through his immortality is he created magnet rings that you put onto your fingers and toes to ensure people's cells always heal properly and never die. Mag with magnets? He Magnets. <laughs> so, oh, d d yeah, magnetic the rings that you put on your fingers and toes. Uh -huh. So he what he did was he just basically modernized ancient Chinese medicine to make immortality accessible for everyone. Oh, what is How is it for everyone? You can buy it on Amazon. You can buy those rings on Amazon. <laughs> <Which> is, <laughs> in either black or white. Yeah. But but just to let you know, the black ones are a little more expensive because they're stronger. So uh, if if you want to buy these, if you want to become immortal, you can give your money to him. And however much money it is, you can uh, become immortal just like him. I don't know how they, you know, Letter Jones with his, you know, trying to have that, the city of immor immortals. And I know a lot of people want to be immortal. And I know that death is scary. I think it's best left for, like, you know, just pop culture. You know, vampires, you know, fucking characters in movies and, you know, Highlander. Superman. Superman's immortal. <laughs> you know, we'll just, we'll just, we'll just, you just leave it up to them. Even Hans Molman, remember from The Simpsons? He's immortal. <laughs> that, that guy doesn't die. Remember? He's died a lot. Oh, shit, you weren't kidding. He, he actually does have rings on Amazon. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, man. Yeah, you, you can, can buy you can live rings. forever for, for around $40. Forty bucks. There you go. Are those the black ones or the white the ones? The black ones are thirty nine dollars, and the white ones are. I wonder what does it. Do you not live as the black ones are stronger. Yeah, but if you're immortal is, with each one, what is it? What's the difference? You might as well get the twenty nine dollar. <laughs> because maybe it's not. Maybe it heals you slower. Yeah, so you'd be like Wolverine. Like, do you like you regenerate? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like if you get a cut, man, it'll just it'll just heal itself, man. You know. If you have liver disease, I'm sure it'll just heal itself, right? You have those rings on. They're just and it's just plastic with like two the round magnets on the right yes. side. <laughs> That's all it is, man. Eternamag. So like if you want to go buy one, they're called Alex Alex Chu Immortality <laughs> Magnetic Rings and they're eternal is this, is it, Eternamags. Is this, guy pay, is this guy paying you to say this or what? Yeah, I want, well like <laughs> you know, people might want to live forever, so you gotta give them the information so they know. Yeah, yeah. Everybody if you wanna live <laughs> go to go to Amazon and check out Alex Chu's shit. <laughs> so what do you got with your Russian guy? People have been claiming to have created free energy devices for centuries. Like if you go online, you can get, you see like tons of YouTube videos of diagrams for like numerous devices, all of them claiming, you know, break the laws of thermodynamics. Even like Nikola Tesla was a multidisciplinary uh, genius. You know, he, his discovery of rotating magnet fields in, in 1882 led to a series of U.S. patents in, in 1888 which gave us like the, the AC electric power system still used today. This one achievement earned him the honor of being called the man who invented the 20th century. He also had some other discoveries, a useful energy that could be extracted from, from the heat of the, of the ambient air. And that electric power in the form of radiant energy could be broadcast to everyone. So it was like wireless energy that was free, you know, throughout the, throughout the ground in the air. 
I know a guy, he actually quit his job and he believed that he could, he found the secrets of Tesla's free energy and he spent months designing this, these schematics to a machine that he believed would create abundant energy, you know, for nothing. Like he became, oh, interesting. yeah, he became obsessed. And every time I'd talk to him, he'd go off about like he would, that he needed financing, he, you know, that to build a machine. He wanted, he was trying to find investors. He wanted to raise money. And he was getting to the point like his marriage was falling apart. You know, he wasn't paying attention to his kid. Um, and he was basically isolating himself from his family and friends. And one day we talked, I talked to him and um, he felt comfortable enough to show me his plans. So was he, was he ignoring everybody because his, his plans were too hard to, to implement or what? Like, why was he cutting everybody else off? Because, you know, he was trying to, like, he, he believed that he, he had discovered Tesla's secret and he didn't want anybody to steal his ideas. One day, like he finally felt, you know, I talked to him long enough and he felt comfortable and when, and he showed me the plans and I was like, holy shit. And it looked like a five-year-old had drawn plans. Like it was out of crayon. Like he, he didn't know what the hell he was doing. Okay. And what happened was he was he was basically sick. He he had a he was bipolar and he needed medication. Okay. And so he was kind of schizophrenic too. So he finally his family finally got got him to the to the doctor and got him medicine. And like he's a lot better today. There's other people have claimed have in the past have claimed things like with well, free energy. And mm-hmm. like what would you say if I told you that you could levitate and fly using the power of insects? Would you, would you buy Levitate it? and fly with the power of insects. I'd say you're full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say give me back my money. I just need you to invest a, a, a million dollars and then we can... Oh, that's it. That's shit. Easy, <laughs> you know, a five, with the five install, pay, install payments. Yeah, I know. A million dollars each month for, <laughs> for, for the next nine months. <laughs> so how's this guy... What's this guy up to? So the guy's name was uh, Victor uh, Gr- Grobenikov. And he claimed to be able to do it. Rogernikov, he was a self-proclaimed Russian scientist, a naturalist, and a a paranormal researcher. His main passion was uh, entomology, the study of insects. Yeah. And he like he spent a lot of time out in the wilderness, camping out, looking for looking for and studying like many species of bugs, trying to learn everything about them. On one of his expeditions, he discovered that he he discovered a certain insect, and he believed it to be a kind. He he said it was a kind of beetle, and he found that these beetles didn't fly like most other insects but they were able to defy gravity they're at they had like an anti-gravity effect when they propelled themselves what yeah so they're basically levitating so he believed mm-hmm. that the wings which had like a hexagonal pyramid structure it was matrix underneath the wing caused a spinning vortex which created a magnetic field that that counteracted gravity so if you look up uh Grobeginikov on youtube you can see like videos of people or you could actually see him because he died like in 2001. So like he would place like the two wings and he would put them together and causing one of the wings to jump away. Like he would, he would put the wing on top of the other one and it would kind of hover and fly off. Hmm, interesting. Of course he was like, oh, what, you know, what can I do with this? So he, he started yeah, slapping these wings to ride. So in 1991, he, he took a bunch of these beetle wings and glued them onto these four fan-like uh, structures mm-hmm. and put them in four corners of a wooden box. And he took that box and he fan- and he fashioned some handlebars on it. So, with the controls to maneuver maneuver the flying machine. So like when he he, he had like controls on it, so he can move the f- fan out the the bug wings <laughs> from the front or the back, so he can move forward and back on it. It looks like those old, you know, like when you see those scooters like in the from the fifties that are made of wood, like on like on Back to the Future, where he takes a oh yeah, <laughs> it looks kind of like that. But it looks like a pogo stick with a wooden box underneath <laughs> on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. <laughs> well, he saw a little bit too much Back to the Future, or what? <laughs> I guess he was like, "Yeah, that's the way to go." Yeah. He, so he 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 built the thing. He jumped on it. He took it for a test spin. Guess how fast he was going on this thing? Um, twenty miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> what do we got? Let's see, he claimed the device can lift up to two hundred twenty pounds and can go almost a thousand miles per hour. Thousand? Miles? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what's the speed of light? What's the, oh, what's the speed of uh, sound? <laughs> Well, he, damn. Well, the thing is, like, oh, he said that because because of the the anti gravity effect of, created by the bug wings, it created mm-hmm. like an energy field around him, and so like he was protected from the environment, so he could fly all over the place, you know, and he would it would be this like this bubble around him. What? Because of the A bubble around him, so so that's what. So okay, so how far can he go? Well, he he can go as far as he wants because there's it was free energy. 
That's not, how, like, how far did he go? Like, did he fly from like Hong Kong to? Well, you know, to, he did like, a couple. He did a couple. <laughs> New Jersey. <laughs> You know what I'm well, he like he didn't like go at that speed all the time. Like he 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 tried to keep it to to a certain speed where like he was flying around his area where he lived. <laughs> okay. And but he took some pictures. The the funny thing is like the two pictures he has is like um, you can look him up. He's basically he's on the ground on one of it, holding onto it, and then the next picture he's like looks like he's he's uh he's up above, he's up higher, and the shadows like cast a little further away. Okay. So, I mean, there's, it's, and he said that he can't take video of it either because, like, because of the anti gravity and the, the electrical field around it. Like, if he tried to take video, nothing would show up on the, on the, on the screen. So, like, taking video footage didn't work. <laughs> okay. So, it's, so it's like, it's like watching a Bigfoot video. <laughs> and there's, there's no, <laughs> there's, no there's no concrete evidence that it's even there, right? Yeah, like, <laughs> so he told me. Yeah, it's, it's always like you know, like he always has an excuse, like like oh no, it's like yeah, it's, it's too dark right it's now. Too dark it's right noon. now. I can't, I can't it's, do it. I'm kind of tired. Noon. I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to jump on the machine because you know it hurts my back. Yeah, no. I don't want to. I, don't I can only do it when nobody's around. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way it works if nobody's around. <laughs> I can't have any other energy yeah, around. And, and, he, and he says when he flies on it, oh, you can't see him because of the, because the gravity, because it's distorted around him. And light bends ar- around with the gravity on the field. Uh-huh. So, like, if you yeah. if he was flying around, like you can you can see him at all. That he was in, that he <laughs> that he'd be invisible. Invisible. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit, or like man. if you did see it, you'd see kind of like a light uh, a a light sphere around him. But it would be hard <laughs> okay. to detect because you know he's flying around in the sky. This is so he's like basically like a lightning bug. Yeah, but yeah. So he's <laughs> he's pretty much awesome. Good. But he died, you said, in 2001? He died in 2001. Um, so what happened to all his patents? So basically what happened was he, he was still in the middle of, of uh, doing his work. Like, you know, his, mm-hmm. his, his life's work was, was, still, was still going on. But, the, mm-hmm. but he, didn't want, he didn't want people to, to find out what bug it was that he was using because he was afraid. Because he loved bugs. Like, that was, that was his passion. Yeah, that was his love. That was his <laughs> <laughs> so he loved bugs so much that he didn't, he didn't want humanity to go and take these bugs and start using them for this purpose because he he felt they would you know they would wipe out the the uh, the species. Okay. So he decided not to tell anybody what bugs. And so when he died, the the, the that technology went away with him. But now there's people just like I was you know there's people that get obsessed with with uh with with that kind of free energy stuff. There's people on YouTube now, like you can see them and they they're trying to figure out which bug it is or which beetle it is that uh that he uses. And so what did he? What did he claim to find these beetles at? He didn't really say where he found them. He just yeah. said it was a type of beetle that <laughs> type, of type of beetle that he that he the wings he took off because a beetle has like two wings. They have oh, there's like he, the main. He meant Volks. He meant Volkswagen. <laughs> <laughs> That's how he's going. That's fast. how he's going so fast. <laughs> Lightning speed. Okay. Because <laughs> the beetle has the beetle has like two wings and there's like a there's a there's a like a shield there's like a cover wing, and mm-hmm. then there's like his regular flying wing. But he, he didn't. I think they used the the flying wings to basically control where they go, but the outer shield had like a had like a design underneath it that that pretty much propelled propelled the the beetle. Okay. So like I said, people now are trying to figure out what what beetle. So you, if you go on on YouTube, you'll see a couple couple people on there who said they they found the the beetle, and it's like the this rhino rhino beetle. Mm-hmm. It's like this little beetle has like a big old nose, and they think it's that beetle. Why would why would they think that? Or you look under the weeds; it has the structures that he was talking about. But are they able to fly like he was? Um, it, the thing is, like, if you go on YouTube, there's a couple people that try to re- replicate his his experiments. They'll put the the two the the wings together, and the thing will like flip around. And they've even there's even some videos where people had put a bunch of them in a box and they throw it somewhere and it'll flip like the like a maybe a box about like like a six inch by like a one foot box you know mm-hmm. and <clears throat> yeah and it'll, and the bucks will flip around oh shit so these so of course like you said the videos are they look pretty shitty but people think that they found they're able to replicate his work they, they don't even look that shitty they're, you can watch them and they look they look fine but a lot of people tell a lot of people say when they do the the bug when they test the when they do the wings together mm-hmm. they they do it on some like a they do it on some material that might have like electrostatic static electricity mm-hmm. on it and people say, well, you yeah. know, that's that's what's causing it. 
So when they do it, you know, it has a static electricity, and that's why it's that's why they're flipping around and moving around all weird. Oh, I gotcha. Oh, interesting. So, but but what happened to all his patents and stuff? Well, he didn't have what? a lot of patents. That was that was a that was a Tesla. He he just basically he was more of a he was more of a bug lover, and he wasn't really like a like he was more of a self proclaimed scientist. So he 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 liked the bugs and stuff, but he I don't think he really had any like proper education. Oh shit! For some reason, I was thinking this guy was like some type of scientist or something. I mean, he just liked <laughs> bugs. He just liked being out there with them. Yeah, like he, he was just that much in love with bugs that he would just spend all his time with them. Yep, yep. He's a naturalist and a paranormal researcher. Damn. And oh, kudos to that guy. <laughs> Fuck. I mean, <laughs> I thought he was like getting paid to do. You know, he just no, learned it on the side. No, it was just his own work. Yeah. Oh, good for him. <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to say. I got to see these videos, you know. I just got to see. <clears throat> I mean, if if you could have all this uh, soft made, you know, energy, I mean, it, fuck, you'd be rich. But then again, would all these companies allow you to do it? All these oil companies? Uh, I don't know. You, you always hear, but again, to to make f- free energy. I mean, people always claim that, but I don't think anybody can actually do it because it would just break the laws of of thermodynamics. Because you can't. Well. Yeah, I, I know that. And a, another topic I was talking about, uh, do you remember that guy who did the Coral Castles, the Ed Lee Skolnan? Oh, yeah. He was supposed to have done that as well. He he knew the power of it, and he got, according to the stories, Remember? do you remember any of that? He had found ways, like, to move, like, huge-ass stones, and he had built, like, the, he had built that castle for, like, his wife or something, or was it a woman? That, the girl, a woman he loved, yeah. that he, that she shunned him back in, like, Lithuania or wherever they were from. But, uh, yeah, he built all those Coral Castles, like, like well, maybe she'd come back to him. Um, he was in love with her, and he built all that stuff. But he he said he knew the the power of all Earth was with was magnets. Magnetism is what the main secret was to Earth, how to move things. And he was moving oh, like like tons of coral castles. Like they actually weighed like over a ton, a ton or two, and he could move them around. But of course, the thing was was he would never show anybody how he did yeah, it. Yeah, he'd do it like at night or something, or like he'd do it when, when nobody was watching, and then yeah, and and he he built like a big you know high walls around his place. So that nobody could just watch him at night, and he would like, you know, he was in Coral Gables, Florida, and stuff, and or, you know, down that area, and he was there was a lot of that uh, coral, and he would cut it out, and he would shave them, and you know, the weird thing they were thinking, what they thought was weird, was how was he, he would, you know, you can make a square in the ground, but how are you gonna pull it out? He was able to just, he was able to make like perfect cuts. Yeah, and people thought that he pull it out. People thought that he had like the ability to do levitate things. Well, yeah. I mean, how else are you gonna do? How are you gonna do that? How are you gonna cut below? Well, they used to do that, I mean, like in in Egyptian time. They they would there's a there's a way to do it. I don't know how to do it, but there there's supposed to be a way to do it. Yeah. Um. But one of the things was like he allegedly he knew, like you said, everything was with magnetism, and he had said that um, he knew how to harness uh, natural energy, and he had he had a he had a picture of that did you ever see that picture where it was like some big contraption it was just like made out of trash <laughs> and, he have, and, and, and 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 the it was a bike wheel uh-huh. a bike pedal and all, all he did was crank that and it would just yeah. it would power up his house really i don't remember that yeah one. yeah there was a picture of it there was like he hardly allowed any pictures but there's a picture of him having some big contraption that all he did and it had like a a bike wheel as a contraption and and it would just uh he would power it and so allegedly what the story i think what it was was that he he had that information. He sent it to like uh, the governor in Florida. Mm-hmm. He said, "Hey, you know, I got, I know how to make, you know, energy out of nothing." And what it had happened, like I said, I'm not sh- saying this is all true, but allegedly, um, some men came to his home and beat his ass, and they took his alleged, you know, they they wrecked his, his stuff they took and his they bike took wheel his away. papers. They did that, man. They and they beat the shit out of him. They almost left him for dead. They did leave him for dead. But he, you know, his neighbor came over and found him and, you know, helped him get back, nursed him back to life. And after that, he was like, nope, I'm not telling anybody anything anymore. Like, that's it. Because they, Cause he, he, he had he had come across something that they didn't want him to out. And they took all his patents away. They, like, they were just, you know, just just disappeared, gone, deleted. Because he, he died, like, in 51, didn't he? I don't know what year he died, but it was it was a while back. But he does have the Coral Castle down in Florida. You can still yeah, go you can to. still go to it. It's like a museum. Yeah, and the door was um, it was like I don't remember how many tons it was, but the front door, like the first thing, it was basically hanging on a pin. Yeah, I remember. And, I remember some, some guys saying that they had, it had broke. 
It had broken. It took like nine MIT engineers to try and fix it. They couldn't fix it, and they finally ended up doing some workaround. But yeah, he he had it like just holding on like a like a thumbtack or something. Yeah, and it's a big ass it's a big ass bro- block of stone too. Yeah, it's it's over like a I think it's like over a ton or something. And and he he made shit that shouldn't have been. He did things that 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 seemed a little odd. Like I said, like moving those by himself without a crane or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, a little bit weird. Yeah, you know, building that whole you know coral thing. Not saying it can't be done, but just him moving it around by himself is is odd, you know. Mm-hmm. And like you said, his his whole thing was that that it was all about magnetism. And the reason he didn't explain it is that he said that people weren't ready to understand it yet. That it was like too. <clears throat> it'd be like you teaching, you know. I gotta teach a bunch of monkeys how to use a computer. You know, they're not gonna grasp it. Because I, I remember he he was claiming that like if you just go to the library and and read and stuff you could figure out how to do all this stuff exactly yeah he says it's it's all public knowledge but the humans just don't grasp it yet not humans but the, the yeah, people they don't, don't wanna, they don't want to invest the time to, to learn uh, you know i i just think that he i think he thought that we were kind of too lazy like that it's the answers are there but if we're not able to see them then we're not ready for them is basically how he this was like his attitude kind of was was that if if you're not if you're not willing to see what's in front of your eyes, I'm not gonna help you. You know that that's on you. Unfortunately, whatever he knew or however mm-hmm. he knew it, because he even wrote a little book. The book was on some type of magnetism, and I remember bu- I bought that book. Oh, you bought it? Do you still have was, it? Yeah, I remember. I don't know if I still do. I mean, I bought it like in, uh-huh. like 2001, 2002. I don't know if I have it. Cause I remember I I talked about this to people at work back back then, and a few people wanted mm-hmm. to read the book, and I don't know if I ever oh. got it back. It was a long time ago, and they took the secrets of Coral Castle with them. Yeah, I mean, whatever he knew, man, it's he took it with him. Unfortunately, hey, look at the pictures. I mean, the place looks pretty awesome. I kind of want to go there in real life and just check like it out. I would like to go there too. Yeah, I've never been to Florida, and that would be a place to go to. I mean, it's got it's an impressive place. It's unfortunate that we'll never like know how he did it, and especially like I said, that 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 door, that that front door is impressive. You know, however he did that and. You know, it took those engineers like a long time to just try and get, do a mm. workaround. But the place, and the thing was, is he was building this stuff. I think in his, um, he moved to that area, but he was originally li- living in uh, in another part of For- Florida. Yeah, he moved the whole the whole castle. He moved. Yeah, he moved it all. He left the part of Florida he was in where he almost mm. got killed. He's like, "Fuck this, guys! I'm I'm out." I'm yeah, out. I'm out. Fuck you! Fuck you guys! Kick rocks, <laughs> motherfuckers. Um. Yeah, but he, he took it with him. He went to Coral Gables. Just too many bad memories there. And he had hoped that he would always win his woman back. <clears throat> the woman that, that never married him back mm-hmm. in Latvia. Latvian. He was, he was Latvian. So, yeah, unfortunately, um, hopefully people have been there. I, I don't know anyone who's been there. But it looks like an interesting place. It looks like you said maybe it has to do with the maybe he knew the way the Egyptians knew how to do things. Yeah, because I've seen some videos of this of this guy. And, like, one of his hobbies was um, moving huge-ass stones. And he, but mm-hmm. he would use like uh, levers and pulleys and stuff like that, and like he took like this couple ton stone and he he would uh, he would kind of rock it up, like he he built this thing where where like he, he was able to lift one side and then he'd put like a, a piece of wood in there, and then it would kind of like a teeter totter <clears throat> and then he'd move to the other side and he'd put a piece of wood there, mm-hmm. and he just kept doing that over and over until he got it to a certain height and then he was able to tip it all by himself and it was like a couple tons. And he mm. said that like he would use a lot of like uh, like sand or like small rocks, and he was able to move. You know, like he'd put them underneath. You'd mm-hmm. put them underneath the stone, and he was able to move them pretty easy. So it says that he he um he was originally in Florida City, and he hired a truck driver to move it to um, Homestead, Florida. Homestead, so, Florida is where he's at now, or where the where the yeah. the castle's at now. So it's yeah, I think so. Um, it says in in, in Homestead. I'm not sure where that's at, and I don't know my geography of Florida, so. <laughs> I just know. Um, that's what it says. That's what it said that he he ended up moving it to. I just know that's where all the crazy shit happens. In Homestead. In Florida. <laughs> oh. Shit. Every time you hear like a crazy ass story, like people eating each other or some shit. It's, it's oh always, yeah, like, no it's shit. Huh? Like Florida. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's always something there, huh? All those uh, all those uh, holes still appearing there. Remember those, the ground was swallowing up those uh, sinkholes? Oh, I don't know. Remember that was happening a couple years ago? Yeah. 
No, I haven't heard anything about those. Yeah, there was like sinkholes just kind of, kind of, you know, appearing like here and there. You know, houses would just be swallowed, roads would collapse. Man, that's some scary shit. What, the one story that popped up was in July fifteenth, twenty seventeen. That's the last one. In the Tampa area, it's sinkhole in Orlando Lakes. I was gonna tell you like with uh, living forever and or immortality. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember the story where this guy. <laughs> It's like they, they started this uh, cryogenics uh, society. Mm-hmm. And basically people were giving this guy money to to freeze them when they died. So that when, you know, when the later on when they when they uh, brought them back, you know, when they found like whatever cure, like if they had, like, let's say they had cancer or they had some sort of sure. sort of disease sure. that, you know, that, that what they didn't have a cure for. So they would mm-hmm. come and they gave this guy money and he told them, you know, he would cry, he would freeze them. Mm-hmm. And so the guy... Um, took their money and then you know like and later on when they find the cure like he would revive it and his when he first started it like his intentions were were, were good like he wanted to, to be able to help these people out but it got to the like to the point where he ran out of money mm-hmm. he basically he was just freezing them but he wasn't freezing them properly and he was keeping them in the, like these storage lockers yeah and he was telling people to get you know he would tell the, the spouses of, of the people that died that's like yeah you know i, I got them there properly but he was still taking more money and he thought, like, if he can just get more people to do it, that he would be able to to freeze them later, just keeping them in a storage facility. <laughs> and I don't even think he free, I don't think he froze most of them. Like he just basically was cutting their heads off and storing them, hope and hoping that he would be able to get enough money to to properly do it. And he finally got busted. No shit. So nobody before that, nobody was questioning any of that stuff. Well, no, because like you know, people it was it was like a new technology, and people were. You know, they, they knew that there was cryogenics. They and there were people that wanted to live try to live forever or like, you know, be able to live for long periods of time and and like it was a possibility and he basically basically scammed them. But I think I from what I remember the documentary, he was actually at first he was actually really trying to, to get it done, like but he just didn't have the technology to pay he had didn't have the money to pay for it. It's all like demolition, man. Remember <laughs> <laughs> with Stallone and uh, they come out all and, uh, Wesley Snipes. Remember they they froze them. Yeah, that was their jail time to put them so they could come back like thirty years in the future. Remember? Yeah. <laughs> cryogenics it doesn't like cryogenics doesn't completely work, does it? Like I don't think they know how to thaw somebody completely. I I think that's what the problem is: is they know how to freeze you, they just don't know how to bring you back without you without you fucking up. Yeah, I think that's the the main issue. Cause, and then they have to freeze you properly without damaging your cells. Exactly. And I don't and think they can do that. I think they can, but it's super expensive. Because and and you have to keep it maintained, you know? Mm-hmm. You, you have to keep you know the body frozen for however amount of time that, that you have them in there. That's why um, <clears throat> Demolition Man doesn't work, unfortunately. Because <laughs> you can't you can't bring them back, man. <laughs> Didn't that would that would be cool to be it, frozen was, to be able to know all that? Like, remember how the uh, Wesley Snipes he knew like karate, he knew how to do all this shit. After yeah, that. they just basically put in his dream right? in his brain, right? Yeah, so they, yeah, I thought that was awesome. I was like, man, I'd do that. So you could just fall asleep and like we like ten years later know how to do all this stuff. Yeah, that's and right. And you'd be in the future. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You just learn all that shit just like real quick. Didn't uh. I kind of wanted to say, uh, remember where Bat Boy, where we got Bat Boy's information? <laughs> the Weekly World News? Yeah. Man, I just came across some tidbit that I forgot that I want to talk about. That I don't know if you knew that um, the Mexicans were sneaking onto the U.S. Olympic team. What? You can't trust those guys. Yeah, the Mexicans were sneaking on there. Um, yeah, they're just, they're just letting them be on there and, uh, you know, under the orders from the Trump administration, coaches were not allowed to ask the Mexican athletes if they were illegal or not. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they're they're able to, um, they're able to they're allowing them to just you know join the team, just walk on and join the team, like mm-hmm. no no questions asked. And that also, that doesn't sound like Trump at all. <laughs> but but also, um, what makes this better for the United States? Is this move will add to the U.S. medal count because the Mexican hockey team is predicted to do very well in the Olympics. They have a hockey team? No. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Why don't they? <laughs> they don't play hockey in Mexico, man. <laughs> it's only soccer and baseball. 
But uh, yeah, there, there's that's the, this is this is everybody's is fake news. This is real fake news. Weekly World News. <laughs> <laughs> this is not true. But uh, they do have these these news articles are good. This is where we got Bat Boy from, and a lot of the shit is just fake and it's funny and it's good entertainment to read. So, um. <laughs> So this this portion of the broadcast is um, sponsored by Weekly World News. <laughs> yes. <laughs> one of the yeah one of the last uh, sentences they say is after learning the Mexicans were allowed to become U.S. citizens without any challenge whatsoever. Many athletes from other countries are planning on joining the American team as well. Chinese athletes, however, are forbidden from joining the U.S. team. Quoted: If they do, they will be shot. So <laughs> <laughs> no, whoa, shit, that's pretty. That's pretty said, an anonymous, said an anonymous Chinese official. <laughs> <laughs> So, no, no, can do. <laughs> oh, I, one thing I would remind you of. Remember, remember last week we were talking about the Mandela effect, and and I told you I saw that video. I found that video. The oh, the Nostradamus video. The Nostradamus video. I found it. Yeah, so, you told me you you told me when you were in a dream, you found it in your dream. So, <laughs> <laughs> and so that means it's real. So, so everybody. <laughs> So I everybody, found that video. he found it. So I was not, I was not a uh, Mandela effect. That I was, no, I, he, I am in he the found right, it, I am in the right universe at this point in time. Yeah, <laughs> he's found it. <laughs> you dream found it. Yeah, no, no. Well, that's good. Hopefully, uh, did you get to watch it again? Yeah, it was, it was exactly the way I remembered it. Whereas it had a like this. Some this, guy in uh, a turban that was. Yeah, tur- the blue turban and blue uh, turban. They. They shot like missiles at the New York, and it was all this explosion. But they were talking about being a it being a nuclear attack. Just they didn't so say exactly it was a nuclear attack, but that's how they pictured. That's how they uh, that's how they showed it. Oh, I got gotcha. you. So it was supposed to be the guy in the blue turban. He was not riding a horse, right? <laughs> <laughs> you say he was riding. I'm thinking he's on a horse. Was he was he riding a tank? Riding a missile? What does he do? <laughs> No, he this was like in, he was like in this like big old computer like this like a kind of like a war room kind of thing with all these oh I got gotcha. you all these eighties computers like the, the green the green writing on there on the, on the yeah screen. yeah the DOS and yeah, basic like, yeah, and type code like all launching missiles and like their uh the United States was launching missiles back and killing theirs killing their or taking down their missiles and then but like two of them got through and oh so it was basically just ended where everyone died yeah so everybody it's died how it was yeah. Hmm. But you know, it was kind of it was it wasn't exactly, but it was it was kind of close where it was kind of creepy. Gotcha. Yeah. Did they say when that was supposed to occur? Well, no, what time? they never give dates. <laughs> well, you know, no, but you know, they, they did. They he's did. so accurate that he I should know. have these. <laughs> but they did say like the the end of the world was gonna supposed to, supposedly supposed to happen seven years after that incident. The end of the world supposed to happen seven years after. Yeah. So the well, end of the end of the world was supposed the, to happen. The Earth seven is years supposed after. to burn out. Is that what you mean? Like, but they didn't what? say how it would end. They would just say that the end of the world would happen. So uh, isn't that what we, they say we, in the Bible? Huh? Isn't there something like that said in the Bible as well? Or no? Am I wrong? It might say something. No, it says a lot of weird shit in there. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know my Bible very well. No, I'm not going <laughs> to act like I do. I just thought there was something like that where... Didn't where the Lord like, say us that seven days? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> seven days unto you will happen yeah, the end of the times. I know. The Lord says and Nostradamus told us, <laughs> told him that... In a documentary that he saw. Ever. Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know Jesus saw a future <laughs> of Nostradamus predicting all this shit. <laughs> so, so it says this must be true. So, yeah, uh, I don't yeah. know. Uh, that's, I don't know. It's always seven years, isn't it? Something like that. Yeah. Well, I think in the Bible, it's supposed to be like seven. Seven is supposed to be like a number of completion. Completion. So, they, so yeah, like it's it's like supposed to be like God's number. Or something like that. So they a lot of a lot of people use like seven as as the numbers. Like oh, you got seven years for this or seven years for that. Is that why seven's a lucky number then? I yeah, I think so. Learn something new every day. Yeah. So we're getting pretty close to the end. Before we go, I want to do a shout out to uh to one of our listeners named Sal Undy. He's been uh he's been sharing a lot of our our uh, our podcast on Facebook, and we just appreciate that he's a he's a he's a fan and that he's uh supporting us. So Sal Undy. Thanks, Sal Lundy. We appreciate it. We, we salute you. True American, folks. It's <laughs> a real American for you. American. Yeah. <laughs> Not a hater. He's a real American. <laughs> so thank you, Sal. We appreciate your love. All right. So it's time for us to go. Yep. 
So I hope everyone had a good day. Oh, one last thing. Super Bowl is going to happen in two weeks. New England Patriots versus Philadelphia Eagles. If anybody watches football, indulge and enjoy. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to be a shitty Super Bowl for you. <laughs> New England wins again. I look forward to the commercials. So yeah, <laughs> this should be pretty fun. So we'll uh, have a good morning, evening, or night, and we'll see you next week. Until then, stay strange. Stay strange, everyone. Bye-bye. If you enjoy the show, please go to iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or wherever you're listening. And please give us a good rating. If you want to share a story or have ideas for a future episode, you're welcome to visit us at www.thestrangepodcast.com. We look forward to hearing from you.